So hello guys, good morning. Today in this session, we are going to understand uh, a very important concept of organic chemistry, uh, and that is substitution reaction. Okay, so there are two types of reaction mainly we have. Uh, it's not like only two types, but two types of reactions only we have, which affects the, uh, you know, which those type of reactions takes place in chemical, uh, in organic chemistry. Okay, just a second. Okay, so today in this session, we are going to see substitution reaction. Right, it's a long chapter. Okay, it's a long topic also. There are so many things, uh, you know, we need to understand, to understand these kind of reactions. But uh, since this is, you know, oriented to, uh, oriented towards KVBY. So we'll only discuss the important uh, topics here. Okay, so we are going to see substitution substitution reaction. Okay, so if you look at the name, if you, if you look at the name, it with the name only you can understand that there is substitution taking place. Right? But substitution of what? That's the question. Right, substitution is taking place here. So first of all, what is a substitution reaction? Okay, so basically when you look at the reaction, any example if I show you, okay. So suppose if I take this example, we have a compound, a molecule CH3Cl, CH3Cl, and this reacts with a compound of iron called suppose SH minus. SH minus you can consider similar to similar to OH minus. Okay, SH minus, OH minus, all these are similar, so you can consider that easily. Okay. So if you see this two reaction, so in this what happens, this SH minus is able to replace Cl minus from the reaction, okay, and forms thiol as the product. Okay, and forms thiol as the product. So the product here depends upon what nucleophile we are using. Okay. So, this reaction takes place and this converts into CH3, SH and Cl minus goes out. Cl minus goes out. So, if you look at this reaction, this SH minus, it displaces the chlorine O. over here okay and suppose I am taking some solvent here H2 right this reaction takes place in this solvent basically the purpose of solvent is what is the reaction of the medium of reaction this molecule and this ion present in the solution and the reaction takes place medium it is basically okay so what happens here this ion substitutes chlorine in this molecule forms this. Hence it is a substitution reaction. 
correct? Hence, it is a substitution reaction. Okay. So, what all things are there? You see this compound where the reaction takes place. This compound we call it as substrate. The compound on which the reaction takes place substrate. This SH minus this attacks onto this substrate, this particle. So this is attacking particle. Attacking particle. And this negatively charged attacking particle is nucleophile. Is nucleophile. Correct. This is obviously the product we have. And this that goes out here, this is the this is the leaving group we have. Leaving group. Because it leaves from this molecule, it goes out. Leaving group. What is this H2O? This H2O is the solvent. Solvent. Okay. So basically there are four different types of term that we are using here. We are using substrate. We are using attacking particles. We are using solvent. We are using leaving. All these, uh, you know, terms affects the substitution reaction. Okay. Like I said, there are different, different types of substitution reaction. We have seven eight types of substitution reaction we have. Okay. And all these reactions depends upon these four factors, substrates, attacking particle that is nucleophile, solvent and leaving group. Correct. So this is what we need to understand to understand the substitution. Okay, so overall, if I write down this reaction, the reaction is in general expression, if I write down, the reaction is we have RL, the substrate, and we have a nucleophile represented by this. I have taken here negatively charged, but it is not like nucleophile is always negatively charged. It can be neutral also with lone pair of electrons. So either negative charge or neutral. Possible. Okay, this is one type of uh, attacking particle. We have another type also possible in presence of solvent. It gives you RNU. The nucleophile displaces the leaving group and leaving group goes out. Overall, the reaction is this. Right, substitution reaction. This is what it is happening. This attacks over here and this goes out to get this. Okay, so the substitution reaction, like I said, there are many different types of substitution reaction we have. But for KVPY, we are going to focus on only two, that is SN1 and SN2. SN1 and SN2. Only these two we are going to uh, focus on. Okay, SN1 and SN2. But before going into this, let us discuss these two, fa these four factors here: substrates, attacking particle, solvent, and leaving. Okay, in, in, in short, we'll discuss the brief discussion we'll have. So first of all, you write down substrate. So what are substrates? Substrates are generally the molecule which takes part in the reaction. Like suppose we, I'll write down here, uh, CH3Br. Right, we can also take a tertiary alkyl halide, secondary also we can take BR. Okay, we can take benzyl group. Suppose this 
with CH two X. There are many other examples, okay, of substrate. Basically, it is the molecule which is taking the part in the reaction. Okay. Okay. So this depends on many things. Basically, you should focus on this is one degree alkyl halide, three degree. This is two degree, and this is benzyl. Benzyl halide. Okay. Now the second one is the leaving group. Is the leaving group. Leaving group is the one which leaves into the reaction. Like I have given you the example Cl minus and L minus. That is a leaving group. Okay. Now, if I if you see this uh, reaction, okay, uh, the general reaction that I have written already, the reaction is RL plus NU nucleophile reacts in presence of solvent RNU. Plus L minus. Okay. Now, if this negative charge on this leaving group is stable, okay, then it is a good leaving group. If negative charge is stable, then it is good living group. Good living group. LG represents living group. Okay. So more tendency to go out, more will be the rate of reaction. Okay. And tendency will be more to go out when this negative charge is stable. How do we find out the stability of negative charge? For that, we have various effects, electronic effects. Right, inductive effect, mesomeric effect, and and resonance. Correct. With all those points, we can understand the tendency of this leaving group. Okay, but few orders you should all you should know that the order of leaving group is this. Like if you talk about halogens, okay, fluorine is the poor leaving group among halogens. Fluorine, fluorine. Then bromine, iodine. Iodine is the best living group we have. Chlorine is also a good living group. Iodine, I minus is most stable here because the negative charge is spread over a large volume. That's why the order is this. Okay. Now, if I so, show you some example here, suppose we have CS3, C double bond O, O minus. Okay, CS3, S double bond O, double bond O, O minus. Okay, so this negative charge is more stable because of more resonance. We have resonance this side, we have resonance here also with this double bond, with this double bond, and here we have resonance with this double bond. So because of this extra double bond O, the negative charge is more stable, and hence the leaving group ability is this. The second one is the better leaving. Okay, next one, if you talk about OH minus and SH minus, again, the size factor is dominating here, right? So SH minus is more stable, a better living group. If you talk about CH3, O minus and phenoxide ion, O minus. Here we have resonance, this negative charge resonance stabilized, a better living group. Okay, so like this, we can compare the living group ability also of any group. Correct? Any neutral molecules are better living group than the charged one. This one also you must remember. Neutral molecules, 
molecules are better leaving group leaving group then then the charged one okay for example if you are comparing oh minus and h2o h2o is a better leaving group than oh minus okay ro minus and then the conjugate base of it roh is a better leaving group than this okay ph o minus and ph oh is a better leaving group okay rc double bond o o minus rc o o h is a better leaving group This you must remember for leaving group tendency. Okay, next you see solvent. The third factor we have that is solvent. Solvent we have two types of solvent. Why it is required? It is required for required for for the movement of particles required for the movement of particles right and when can when the particle moves they collide and reaction takes place that's why it is important okay now this solvent we have two different types of solvent okay solvent we have two types solvent we have two types the first one is polar solvent and the second one is non polar solvent polar and non polar solvent polar solvent again classified into two categories that is polar protic and polar aprotic non polar solvent example of non polar solvent is we have ccl4 so2 benzene all these are non polar solvent non polar solvent the dipole moment is zero for non polar solvent that is the property of this you must have studied this in physics okay dipole moment because of the it is a vector quantity okay polar solvent the dipole moment mu is not equals to zero okay little bit i'll talk about this dipole moment just a second now what is polar aprotic polar aprotic solvents are solvents in which solvents in which hydrogen atom is attached with is attached with hydrogen atom is attached with electronegative element like oxygen nitrogen fluorine etc these are polar aprotic solvent okay example of this solvent is 
example of this solvent is we have H2O. So basically all these discussions are not required. You just need to know what is polar aprotic solvent and what is polar aprotic. You just need to know the few examples of it. So polar protic solvents like H2O, we can have alcohol, oxygen, hydrogen bond. We can have phenol, oxygen, hydrogen bond. We can have acid, oxygen, hydrogen bond. We can have amine, nitrogen, hydrogen bond. Okay, many examples we have like this. Okay. Okay. Now the another thing that you need to memorize here. Okay, I'll discuss this later. Polar protic. Polar aprotic solvent is what? Polar aprotic solvent are the solvent in which there is no hydrogen and electronegative element form. For example, CH3 O C H3. This we call it as dimethyl sulfoxide, TMSO. You'll get this only written in the exam. Dimethyl sulfoxide. Ethers. Ether are also polar aprotic solvents. Okay, and there are many examples. Okay, these two are important. I'm just trying to make you understand the things for KBPY. Okay, I'm not going into the stuff. Okay, this is the effect of solvent. Okay, now one thing you know that the nucleophilic substitution, the substitution reaction that we have, right? And since we are taking nucleophile here, like I have given you the example, RL plus NU gives RNU. So it is the nucleophile which substitutes here, which gets substitutes here. Right, this reaction is nucleophilic substitution reaction okay the reaction is nucleophilic substitution reaction you look at this example here uh, this one I have written SN1 and SN2. So what is this SN1 represents here? Substitution reaction in the general term, it is more specific. This particle is nucleophile, this is nucleophile. This nucleophile substitutes here and eliminates the leaving group Cl. Hence the reaction is nucleophilic substitution reaction. Right, so this stands for SN1 stands for first order, first order nucleophilic substitution reaction. Nucleophilic substitution substitution reaction. Okay. What is this order? You don't focus on this now, just let it be. It is an experimental quantity. You should know what this SN1 stands for. This stands for first order nucleophilic substitution reaction. Similarly, this one stands for second order nucleophilic substitution reaction. Now, like I told you already, that solvent also has effect on these kind of reaction. So when you take, when you take polar protic solvent, polar protic solvent, okay, 
this one polar protein this one favors sn1 reaction polar protic solvent favors sn1 reaction okay polar aprotic solvent this one it favors sn2 reaction it favors sn2 reaction and since this is the nature we have for these two solvent that's why you should know some examples of polar protic and polar Again, I am telling you this SN1 and SN2 reactions are very competitive reactions. In all the reactions, we cannot say that only SN1 is taking place, right? So there will be some amount of SN2 also, but we'll talk about the one which is dominating, which gives the major product. Okay. So any reaction in which the SN, the substitution, nucleophilic substitution reaction is taking place, there we have the tendency for both type of reaction, SN1 and SN2 both. Okay, SN1 and SN2 both. The one which gives the major product, according to that only we say that this reaction goes under this particular mechanism, SN1 or SN2. Okay, so this is the third factor we have that is solvent now the last one we have here that is that is nucleophile again guys i'm telling you this is not that important for your exam okay the, this part because there are so many things here that we should know we have to study, but I'm just giving you a brief idea of it. If you get any questions on this in case, you could find out the possible answers there. Okay. So nucleophile, like I said, it is the attacking particle. What is a nucleophile? It is either neutral or negatively charged negatively charged attacking particle attacking particle okay if it is neutral then it must have lone pair lone pair like for example we have water okay neutral nucleophile is phenol neutral nucleophile okay alcohol also neutral nucleophile look at this reaction here suppose if i write down this ch3o minus plus ch3cl It gives CS3, OCS3, and Cl minus leaves out. So, how does this reaction happen here, first of all? You see, this is more electronegative. We have discussed this. I effect chlorine is more electronegative. So, this chlorine attracts the bond pair of electron towards its side and this becomes delta negative and this becomes delta positive. Now with this we are trying to understand a little bit about the reaction, okay, how the reaction takes place. Now when this becomes delta positive, right, so the negative charge on this oxygen, this attacks onto this carbon since it is delta positive. And when this attacks over here, the Cl minus takes this bond pair of electron and goes out as a leaving group and we get this. Right, this is nucleophilic substitution reaction. Now when you talk about this reaction, that is CH3O minus 
plus H two. So reversible reaction, it converts into CS three OH and OH minus goes out. Right. So here, this one is not a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Okay. This one is acid-based reaction. Acid-based reaction. Because why? It takes H plus from the solvent and forms this. Right. So if you look at the property here. Both ions are same, but this one is behaving as a nucleophile, and this one is behaving as a base here. So there is a difference in nucleophile and base. Okay, nucleophiles are better electron donors. They can give electron to this. Okay, and basicity is tendency to accept H plus. It has less tendency to give electron pair to this. Okay. Correct. This is the one thing. So these are the four factors we have here, which affects the rate of these reactions. Okay. So let us understand what is SN one and SN two reaction. So the first type of nucleophilic substitution reaction we have, that is, write down the heading SN. One reaction. Okay, so like I said, it is. It is first order. Nucleophilic. Substitution reaction first order nucleophilic substitution reaction. Okay, the general term is what if you look at the reaction, it's very important to understand this because both S N one and S N two looks like similar if you do not understand the mechanism of it. Like suppose. If I take here R L and some nucleophile in presence of solvent, it gives R N U plus L minus. Now you will definitely observe when we start discussing S N two here, then also I'll write down the same reaction. This reaction only I'll write. Right. So, if you do not understand the mechanism, mechanism means a step-by-step -step description of a reaction. If you do not understand it, you won't understand. Then, what is the difference between S N one and S N two? So, let us first understand the various steps involved in this reaction. That is the mechanism. Okay. So, what happens? The R and leaving group bond that we have, it is delta positive and delta negative. We have discussed this. When we have alkyl halide (RCl), right? Previous example we have seen. So this carbon and halogen bonds or nucleophil bond, it dissociates into finally dissociate. It converts into R plus and L minus. This this takes this bond pair of electron and forms this. Right. Now this step. Is the slowest step we have. Slowest step, and it is RDS. Rate determining step. Okay, RDS stands for rate
determining steps okay rate determining steps so there are various steps involved in any reaction the steps which is the slowest step is called the rate determining step means if you find out the rate of this reaction we'll consider this reaction not the other one always we consider the slowest step all this information i am giving correct right? now in the next step what happens the second step of the reaction the r plus and on this r plus the nucleophile that you are taking this nucleophile this nucleophile attacks onto this r plus right and forms a bond with the carbon atom which has the positive charge r n so this is how the product forms okay it is a two step reaction and the product forms this way. okay overall the reaction is this only now one very important point here that this r plus it is the carbocation it is forming carbocation forms more stable carbocation more will be the rate of the reaction okay more stable carbocation more will be the rate of the reaction Now you see when this carbocation forms, it means the leaving group must be very good. Then only it will go out and forms a carbocation, right? It must be very good. So property of for which is which favors this reaction is what that first of all write down characteristics of this reaction. so first of all the carbocation forms here or i'll write down the rate of the reaction rate of the reaction i'll write r o r the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the stability of carbocation okay stability of carbocation like i said sn1 sn2 both are competitive reaction okay if there is tendency of forming stable carbocation then it will be sn1 reaction why not sn2 we will discuss that later okay but rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the stability of carbocation okay rate also it is directly proportional to the nature good leaving group if the leaving group is very good it can easily form carbocation and hence sn1 reaction favorable okay it is also inversely proportional to the basic strength of the leaving group basic strength means electron donating power okay how it can take h plus from this okay so if this is a good base this will easily attack onto this r plus side even it won't wait this nucleophile won't wait for this 
carbocation to form. Once the partial charge develop, this will attack onto this. This will attack onto this, and the leaving will be here. But since it is SN1 reaction, so we have to have this step possible, the first one, which is the formation of carbocation. So we should take the nucleophile, the strength of the nucleophile in such a way, the basic strength of this, that it wait for the carbocation to form. If it is very strong, the basic strength is very high for this nucleophile, then this won't wait for this fully developed carbocation to form, for this carbocation to form. And this will attack on the partial charge only like this. We have discussed in the previous cases. Correct. So the basic strength of nucleophile should be weak, okay, so that it, it will wait for the carbocation to form and then it will attack on this. Okay. So this is the reason we have why the basic strength is weak. Okay. okay. Now one very important thing here that is the since the carbocation is forming, so the second property is the rearrangement of carbocation also possible. Rearrangement of carbocation possible. And we do this rearrangement and this rearrangement happens Rearrangement happens in order to get in order to get more stable carbocation. Okay, more stable carbocation. This rearrangement is possible with hydride shift. Hydride shift, methyl shift, methyl shift, phenyl shift, phenyl shift, etc. We'll mainly we'll have these two, okay, which is important much. SN1 reaction, I have already told you. What is that shift? I'll discuss. Hydride shift in nitrogen. I'll discuss that. Okay. I have already discussed polar protic solvent is required for this. This I would suggest you must memorize this. Polar protic solvent is required for this purpose. Okay. Order of the reaction. I have already told you it is one. SN1 it is. Order of the reaction is one. So these are the few properties of this SN1 reaction. Okay, few properties of SN1 reaction. Now you look at this example and with this example we'll try to understand the hydride and methyl shift. Suppose we have a compound, consider this one, CS3 C, CH3, H, CH, CH3, Cl. This, when reacts with H2. So here what happens, you see, this is the substrate. And this is the nucleophile. Oxygen has known pair. So it is nucleophile. Now what happens in this you see that this carbon has delta positive charge because it is delta negative nucleophile. Right. So in the first step what happens this Cl minus goes out and we'll get a carbocation here which is this. CH3C CH3H CH CH3 positive charge plus Cl minus the leaving group 
first step is this in the second step what happens the h2o nucleophile which is this h2o oxygen has lone pair it is a nucleophile this has the tendency to attack onto this carbocation right but this actually won't happen here if you consider this okay you can write down one product but that would be the minor product why i told you first of all i'll write down the product here this attacks onto this and this converts into ch3c ch3h ch ch3 and here we have h2 since oxygen loses its lone pair of electron so it has one positive charge positive charge on oxygen is not stable so to stabilize this one of the hydrogen here loses its electron to this oxygen and comes out as the h plus okay it gives this electron to here and h plus comes out from this so the product of this reaction would be ch3 ch ch3 then ch oh ch so you are getting an alcohol from alkyl halide now this nucleophile could be anything it can be anything the example that we have seen we can have any nucleophile over here so depending upon the nucleophile you will get the final product for this case we are getting an alcohol okay but this won't be the final product of this reaction i'm telling you okay because the carbocation is forming here this carbocation goes under rearrangement okay see it's it, it is not like the rearrangement is always possible okay the purpose is to get the more stable carbocation okay so for that we'll do this rearrangement if we don't do it actually in the reaction it happens on its own it's not like we allow them to go under rearrangement wherever it is possible it goes under rearrangement forms the most possible carbocation most stable possible carbocation of that molecule and then the nucleo and then the nucleophile attacks on this right so first we'll get the most stable carbocation here and then the nucleophile attacks onto the same carbocation like it attacks over here and then it gives the final product so here what happens the rearrangement takes place and rearrangement gives you the more stable carbocation which is nothing but this you see one of the hydride hydrogen from this takes this electron pair and it's rearranged itself onto this carbon atom this is hydride shift one two hydride shift it is so it goes under hydride shift hydride shift and forms this what does it form you see this here it forms ch3 c ch3 ch2 ch3 and this carbon which loses this hydride ion gets a positive charge now you see you can compare the stability of this carbocation and this carbocation here this carbocation the first one is getting stabilized through hyperconjugation here and the number of alpha hydrogen here would be 3 plus 1 that is 4 okay here the number of alpha hydrogen would be 3 plus 3 plus 2 that is 8 so obviously more alpha hydrogen this one is more stable right so this is 1 comma 2 hydride shift gives you more stable carbocation if further by any rearrangement we can increase the stability of carbocation we'll do that it's not like only one time the rearrangement is possible we can have n number of times but the only purpose is in every step you will be getting the more stable carbocation right in every step you will be getting the more stable carbocation and then only it goes on right otherwise more stable to less stable it won't go less stable to more stable it's possible okay now 
we get this carbocation here. Now you see one more thing here. Since hydrogen gets shipped over here, it is hydride ship. Suppose we do not have hydrogen here, but we have methyl group like this. Then one to methyl ship. If you have phenyl, then phenyl ship. Right. In this case, not possible, but depending upon the atom or group attached to it, we call it as hydride ship, methyl ship, and phenyl ship. Right? What is the purpose of this shifting? The purpose, the only one purpose, is in every step we should get the more stable carbon. Correct? That is the purpose. Now, you look at this uh, product in this reaction. So finally, we get this carbocation as the most stable carbocation in the given example, this carbocation. Now, this is similar now as the previous case. We have water behaves as nucleophile. So this will attack onto this carbon atom and it converts into CCH3. CH2, CH3. O, H, H positive charge on it. And hence finally, H plus comes out from this carbon atom to stabilize the oxygen. This bond pair comes over here and it converts into CS3C, CH3OH, CH2, CS3. So this product is the major product of the reaction. Why major? Because it forms from the most stable major product. A previous one, this product is the minor product of the reaction because it forms from the less stable carbocation. The less stable carbocation. Okay. So what is the overall reaction here? The question was this. If I write down the overall reaction, we have discussed the mechanism of it. But overall, the reaction would be this. CS3C. CS3H, CH, CH2, CH3, Cl with H2O. Correct? That the two product here we get is one is major, other one is minor. The major product is you can directly you know, do this. If you do some practice, you'll get it easily. First of all, the carbon with has halogen will get a positive charge here. Right? And then one to hydride ship will get a positive charge here. This positive charge gives you OH on this carbon atom, and this positive charge gives you OH on this carbon. Okay, the two possible product here we get is we have CH3, C, CH3, OH, CH2, CH3 plus the another product is CH3, C, H, CH3, CH, CH3, and OH. This one is major product, and this one is minor product. Okay, so this is the overall reaction. Like this, the reaction proceeds. Correct? So this is SN1 reaction. Always take care of one thing, that in SN1 reaction, we'll get carbocation first, and then the nucleophile attacks onto this. And wherever the carbocation forms, we always try to get the most stable carbocation. Okay, one more property I forgot to write down here. The one more property you write down, it is a two-step reaction. Two-step reaction, okay? In the first step, the, no, the carbocation forms, and the second step, the nucleophile attacks. Okay, the rearrangement of carbocation, all these things, we consider in first step only. Formation of carbocation is the first step. Okay. Okay, guys. So I hope you have understood this. Okay, there are, like I said, so many things that we should understand. You must have some doubt also over here, right? But those things we we 
could not do because of the time constraint. I am just trying to give you the basic idea of these reactions so that in the exam, if it comes, you can have an you know, uh, idea of that question and then you can give it a try at least. They are not going to ask you very tough questions. Few properties of living group and uh, you know, the polar protic solvent, polar aprotic solvent, you should know the examples of these two. Based on that, we can have the product in the reaction. Okay. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. The next class will start with SN2 reaction. Okay. We'll see SN2 and then we'll see the various examples of both SN1 and SN2. And that is it for substitution reaction. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care.